There have been several randomized clinical trials of uh, the efficacy of PSA screening uh, and whether PSA screening can reduce the risk of metastatic prostate cancer and prostate cancer death. Um, and those trials have showed uh, conflicting results. One large trial, the ERSBC trial, suggested that PSA screening is effective in reducing uh, metastatic prostate cancer incidence uh, and prostate cancer death, whereas another large trial, the PLCO, suggested that there was no significant benefit uh, to PSA screening. And so as a result of uh, those conflicting data and the clinical uncertainty about the benefit of PSA screening, um, providers have very different opinions on whether PSA screening is effective in a real world practice um, and whether the benefits, the potential benefits of PSA screening outweigh uh, the potential risks. Um, and so what we wanted to do was to look at real world variability in PSA screening uh, using the National Veterans Affairs System as our um, study setting and to see whether natural vari that natural variation in PSA screening practices actually you know, is associated with subsequent rates of metastatic prostate cancer. And so uh, the, the idea really is to see if we can um, uh, provide some real world supporting evidence behind the ERSPC clinical trial results supporting the efficacy of PSA screening and reducing metastatic prostate cancer. Um, so we uh, looked at 128 uh, Veterans Affairs facilities across the country. Uh, we measured the PSA screening rates, uh, which is we defined as the percentage uh, of screening eligible men at each VA facility who received a PSA test in a given year. We measured that PSA screening rate from you know, 2005 to 2019. Um, and then we also, for each facility, measured the metastatic prostate cancer incidence rate. Uh, and we ascertained metastatic prostate cancer incidence through a natural language processing algorithm, uh, which processed kind of clinician clinical notes and radiology reports like um, bone scans um, and other scans. And so um, then our analysis essentially looked at kind of high screening facilities, low screening facilities, kind of moderately screening facilities in terms of, uh, you know, the, the percentage of patients receiving a PSA test, and then looked five years in the future in each facility uh, to see whether that PSA screening rate was associated with you know, a higher or lower risk of uh, metastatic prostate cancer incidence in that facility. Uh, and what we found was uh, very much consistent with the ERSPC trial, which was that um, facilities with lower PSA screening rates tended to have higher subsequent rates of metastatic prostate cancer and vice versa. Uh, VA facilities that had very high PSA screening rates tended to have lower subsequent rates of, of metastatic prostate cancer. And so, you, you know, I think overall, this is evidence in support of the efficacy of PSA screening in reducing metastatic prostate cancer incidence. It is not a randomized clinical trial, of course. It's an epidemiological study. Uh, and so by nature, it's purely associational. So we really, I can't make causal claims um, based on this data alone. Um, but I think it is supporting evidence that, you know, perhaps PSA screening really is translating to a reduction in, in metastatic prostate cancer incidence in this real world setting. Um, I guess I can, I can caveat the results as well as, as saying that, you know, we're only looking at one side of the screening coin, so to speak. We're only looking at one um, measurement of screening benefit, metastatic, reducing metastatic prostate cancer incidence. Um, we in the future we'd like to look at uh, prostate cancer mortality as well as a perhaps the ultimate patient-centered outcome um, as well as looking at screening related harms so you know physicians have really very um, they have very reasonable uh, variation in their opinions of, of the efficacy and harms of PSA screening and, and how that should be balanced for an individual patient and so I think it'll be important for us in the future to look at um, rates of uh, negative biopsies, so false positive screening results where you have an elevated PSA and then the patient gets a biopsy, but there's no prostate cancer found. Uh, that's very common um, and is one of the major downsides of, of PSA screening. 
Uh, we can also plan to look at prostate uh, biopsy complications like infections or bleeding uh, after those biopsies. Um, and then um, in future work, we'd also like to uh, look at rates of overdiagnosis. So in high screening facilities, how many of the patients in whom we detect, say, an early stage prostate cancer by screening, what proportion of those newly detected cases would never have been diagnosed in the life of that man um, in the absence of, of screening? And those cases are, we consider to be overdiagnosed. Uh, and that's another you know, potential downside of, of implementing screening at population scale. Uh, so lots of future work to be done. Um, and I think this is really, the study is kind of the first step. Uh, and looking at these questions in the VA system.